Uh, the next speaker, Dr. Jianxiang Wang, uh, a professor and the head department, uh, sorry, is a professor of medicine in Institute of Hematology and the Blood Disease Hospital, Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences and the Peking Union of Medical College. Uh, the topic of his speech is Advances in Induction Therapy in AML Update from China. Dr. Wang, please. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chairman, for your kind introduction, and thanks for the organizing committee inviting me to join this meeting and present data of AML therapy from China. So today, I'm going to focus on the prognosis factors and the recent data update uh, for induction therapy with hemoherentoni. First of all, I will talk about AML prognosis factors. This data achieved from the Shanghai and Zhejiang Hematology Institute. They are include over 1,000 patients, but for patients with odd prognosis factors markers, they have male is 348 and female 257. This means this patient majorly is normal cytogenetics. Uh, we will focus on this kind of category of patient for further genotype analysis. Uh, from the multivariate analysis, you can see the age, white blood cell count, and NPR mutation, and the CB alpha by allele mutations are independent pronounced factors on the complete remission and all survival and even free survival. However, the, oh my God, it's a kind of show the full data, full screen. The male uh, re re regiment, there's a pronounced factors on all survival and even free survival. But the interest, int very interesting from this cohort, the flash 3 RTD and TKD mutation, they known pronounced factor impact on the long-term survival. Uh, according to the uh, multivariate analysis, it can divide the patient into three uh, risk categories, including low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk. But, but very interesting, through this kind of analysis, still one problem we can't observe is that majority of patients still are located in the intermediate risk. If the opt optimistic lay, we should divide patient from the intermediate risk patient into low risk and high or high risk. But in study, still we can't resolve this kind of issues. Uh, this is a recent achievement for the hemoherentonin based induction therapy. This is a, a multi-center trial uh, from China. The, the patient uh, recommended to three kind of induction therapy including HA, that include hemoherotonin, sartorabin, and uh, aclamacin, or HAD, hemoherotonin, dunarobicin, and sartorabin, compared with uh, conventional dose or standard dose DA regimen. This, this includes uh, dunarobicin and sartorabin. Uh, when the patient include in this, this study, the red amount was this uh, three different induction regimen. Once the patient achieves the complete remission, uh, they receive two doses of the intermediate dose of cytorabine, followed by the four course of a conventional dose therapy. All the patient get the partial remission, they will continue to receive additional dose of induction therapy, followed by the same regimen as uh, previously. Once the patient not get failed to get a response, we will withdraw this study and get several therapy. Look at the response. Uh, the CR rate uh, the, among these this three different regimens is different. You can see the, the HAA induction regimen uh, is significantly higher than dunorabicin and sartorabin from course one or course two. And HAD regimen is better than DE regimen for course one. But for HA regimen and HAD regimen, they are now significantly different for response rate. But for survival, uh, you can see the three different regimen has different effect, especially even free survival. The HA regimen 
uh, is significantly higher than D regimen, but for all survival and relapse risk survival, they are not significantly different. If you divide the patient into different risk category according to the cytogenetic profiles, uh, we can tell some difference. Uh, for over survival and even free survival and relapse free survival, the HA regimen is significantly higher than DE regimen. But HA regimen and HAD regimen, they're non significantly different. For the but for high risk patient, uh, there are three different regimens that are not significantly different, but still we can say a very limited patient was in this kind of group. So we can see the data for this kind of patient, we see very not consolidated. But for the adverse events, to say there are no significant difference for myelosuppression, also for non hematologic effect, including uh, hepatic, cardiac, and gastrointestinal, they are known significantly different among three different regimens. Another uh, progress in China for the hemochromatonin based induction therapy is we used different doses of cytorabin. This trial from all hospital, we used HAD regimen. Uh, for the first four days, we used the standard dose of cytorabin. Uh, but from day five and seven, uh, we escalate the dose of cytorabine. The rationale for this therapy is the first four, three days, we use a conventional dose to reduce the leukemia burden. After three, four days therapy, uh, we increase the dose of cytorabine. That means to kill the leukemia cell more efficiently. Uh, this, for, this study also followed by after the patient get complete response. Uh, the patient get the, the further two cause of the intermediate dose of the cytorabine combined with the dunorobinsin and mitoxtrum. Uh, this is data for survival. Uh, from this data, we can say, uh, according to the cytogenetic profiles, you can see in the, for the intermediate risk of patient, uh, this is from the intermediate risk patient, cytogenic patient. The, the patient treated with the intermediate dose of cytorabine is much better than the patient treated with standard dose of cytorabine. Uh, but this data is not randomized trial as compared with the historical control data. So it's not con very convincing. To, to, in order to get very convincing data, we initiate the randomized trial to compare intermediate dose cytorabine and standard dose cytorabine for induction. This trial is uh, initiated in the two, uh, 2010, and uh, this trial is ongoing. Uh, today, we are pre uh, present very preliminary data here. So this data will still continue to enroll the patient we plan to enroll the patient 100 per year, but as we are today, we present this preliminary data for you. So the patient age is less than 55. The median follow-up now is 8.8 8, 8 .8 months. Uh, the male patient is 1,005 and female patient 96. The median age is 37. Is compared to the other data, this cohort, the age, is relatively young. So once the patient include in this study, we will randomize to the two different uh, induction regimen. One is the HAD received standard dose of the chemotherapy. One is the intermediate dose of the cytorabine. The from the day five and the day seven, the dose, the dosage of the cytorabine increased to the one gram Per, kilo, per meters every 12 hours for three days. Uh, once the patient gets a complete response, we will then randomize to the high dose cytorabine, high dose either high dose cytorabine, uh, three milligrams per meters per 12 hours for three cycles, 
or intermediate dose sertraline. The, RRC, the dosage of RRC is 1.5 gram per meter per 12 hours, combined with dunorobinsin and mitoestrone for two cycles, and then followed by the four course of conventional dose chemotherapy. Uh, because uh, we, the patient still will include the patient, we can't set up our own, own the risk group. We have to update the NCC risk categories uh, criteria to divide, divide all patients into different uh, cytogenetic group, group, uh, risk group. Look at the, uh, the response. The complete remission rate for the conventional dose is uh, 71, and the intermediate dose is 85%. But in, if you divide it to different risk group, look at the uh, favorable there are no significant difference, but for the intermediate risk and high risk group, the intermediate dose cytotherapy is dramatically higher compared to the conventional dose. In the survival data, the probability of two year survival is 50, uh, six, six, 62 percent, and probability of resistance free survival is 70. Uh, we can divide the patient into the three uh, different risk groups. It can the survival survive is dramatically different. But for the for survival rate uh, derived from the induction therapy, we can't see the significant difference due to very limited patient and short follow time. Uh, we believe this survival curve or have already separate. If we recruit more patients and follow up more time, we believe we can get significant different a significant different results. For the in, uh, induction therapy div divided to the in different risk group, for the low, better risk and a poor risk patient, the survival curve already separate. But for the intermediate risk patient, has the survival order already the same. We also, as, as planned before, we are waiting for the more patient and more follow up time to get a significant difference. For post remission uh, uh, therapy, uh, there are no different uh, for the high dose or intermediate dose. Of course, also for the different group, risk group, as uh, a consolidation or post remission therapy, there are no impact uh, from the, for the risk group. If we combine induction therapy and uh, post remission therapy and uh, into, con to, into the considerate the different risk group, for better risk group, they're not different. But for the intermediate risk group, we can find the patient who received standard serotonin or and followed by high dose uh, serotonin for post remission, the survival is the worst. But still, we can we can we just mention again, uh, this patient is a very short, for a very short time, and we still waiting waiting for the patient the data for more patient. So. Maybe after three years, we can get the final results for our trial. But for adverse uh, events, uh, uh, it is reasonable you can say that uh, for the induction therapy, if you use high-dose uh, cytotherapy, uh, it's uh, uh, much severe compared to the slender therapy. For the myelos, uh, uh, suppression time and uh, the severity, uh, it's uh, more than the standard therapy. Summary. Uh, right now, so we think in the mainland of China, a majority of hematologic centers have developed the diagnosis the classification, classification system, especially uh, many laboratories have developed a molecular analysis to test the molecular markers for AML to determine the pronounced factors of AML. Uh, but the therapy of AML in China uh, also has achieved a dramatic progress, uh, especially the long-term survival has been improved. Uh, also, so right now, several cooperative group has set up. We can see through this kind of group, we can get more convincing data and for, for you. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Thank you.